Okay, we are ready for our next lecture, given by Alexander Radovan from King ICT. He will tell us more about controlling solar panel system with Java. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you for all for coming. Is this working? Okay. So, uh, as you know, I work as a Java team lead at King. We have a nice team of 25 developers there, and I also work for already 15 years, I think, as a senior lecturer at various universities in Zagreb and, and uh, across the Zagreb. Okay, so a little bit, the, the topic is a little bit strange, I, I, I admit, because uh, it's uh, something related to my PhD study. And I, obviously, since I'm a Java guy, I try to find a topic, this little scientific contribution with, uh, with something that is not so very popular, so to say. So I tried to find a topic that is not, um, that is, uh, not related to, uh, to just programming. I wanted to uh, increase my, I would say, uh, to get out of uh, my comfort zone a little bit to see what can be done with Java. So I started with, uh, with the library that actually focuses on image, uh, image processing, so I will tell you something about it. So, what is the basic concept? So, obviously, there are solar panels. You use solar panels for what? For producing energy, electrical energy, based on the sun and everything around it. Okay, so we have the solar panels, and we want to store our energy that, you, that we produced. Okay, so what is the next step? We want to sell this energy to our energy providers, so to say, and we want to have a system that is stable, that works, that cannot be like, um, well, it works in all cases with all the situations on the sky with the clouds. Okay, simply said. So, uh, this is the problem. If you want to sell your, your energy to your energy provider, you need to promise something. For example, the lowest level of energy that you can produce. In my case, I decided to say, okay, it's 500 watts per square meter. Okay? This means this is a measurement of uh, energy production with solar panels, so to say. Okay, and now, uh, if you have the sky without the clouds, your production is higher, better than this uh, lower, lower limit that you set. But if the sun is covered with clouds, the production is lower. And now, we want to solve, uh, solve this problem with predicting the moment in which clouds actually cover the sun. And obviously, it's, the problem is related to image processing. So what was the per first step in my case? I didn't know anything about it. And I decided, OK, I want to. I need to buy a book, and I, the book is going to so solve all my problems. And of course, I got to Amazon, and I booked the thickest book. I buy the thicker book uh, that existed, and I thought this is the solution for all my problems. I finished the book, and I didn't get my answers. So I was pretty, yeah, shocked. How come? No, nobody is doing this. Nobody is um, tracking clouds on the sky. So. Uh, I was desperate, and I tried to find something very similar to it. Nothing existed. I started this research 2013. Nothing similar existed. Okay. And I, I saw I'm in big trouble. So I need to find something that is not too similar, but the concept is the same. And after that, I found this guy on the internet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the, the basic idea was this. He is obviously not tracking the clouds, but... He's tracking tennis balls. Oh, it works. Okay. So, can I use his idea? Let's see. So, my clouds are much slower than the tennis balls. This is my, I would say, this is the good thing in the whole situation. Okay. And now, I analyzed the situation and I concluded, okay, I need four steps to actually process the image. The first step should be detecting the cloud edges. This is the first step. Okay, I need to detect the cloud edges. They are, let's say, balls up in the sky. That's it. But they are, uh, their movement is pretty strange. You cannot predict everything, especially long term. After that, the second step was determine the movement speed. 
So you need, to, you need to see, you need to predict how much time does it need for the cloud to cover the sun. The third step is predict the start of the shadow and of course, the duration of the shadow. And I'll, I'll try to explain how did I tackle this problem and what are the results. Okay, so step one, we need to convert the initial image that looks like this to something a little bit different, something more adjustable to this image processing. And this means we need to switch from red, green, and blue combination to H, S, and V. So strange, I would say, combination. This means hue, saturation, and value. And with the same image, you get something that looks a little bit different. And I'm not interested in blue colors. I just want to uh, actually detect the borders, detect the clouds in the sky. So that's why this was just right for me. After that, I had to program my, uh, I would say, custom application. Can you guess what technology did I use for that? No. No. Swing, who said swing? Candice for you. you. You know the answer. Why Swing? Swing was before the Java FX. Who, who knew the answer? Yeah, I have enough, Candice. I, ha I have enough, Candice, no problem. Can you catch? Yay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so Swing, I just selected the hue min-max, saturation min-max, and volume min-max for this, let's say, algorithm. And these are sliders, you can just mix and match them to get the best results. But still, this is only the first step. And from this image, I'm getting something that looks like this. It's not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. So the nice thing is I have a black background and white, actually white uh, clouds. And now I need to fix those errors. What are the errors? Those little black dots, little clouds that actually don't affect my score at, at all. So I need to remove them. So the next step is the, to use the mat, of course, you have some morphological operations. One is uh, dilation, the other one is erosion. So with erosion, you are just using the structure element and try to refine those borders at the end. So from this first image, you get something very similar, but you remove some of the little clouds and the borders are a little bit, let's say, sharper than the previous case. Okay, but still, this image is not perfect. We need to remove those dots somehow. What is the next step? Of course, something very similar, something almost the opposite. Dilation means let's try to like, extend those parts that were covered with, with black dots, okay? From this image, I'm getting this one. This looks finally very, very nice. And now it's very easy to detect the border. You just check the difference between two dots, two pixels, and if the difference is very, very, let's say, big, you know this is the border. So that's why there is an algorithm. I'm using Java for my PhD, but still, this is how do you call this type of code? Oh, can this, can this. Okay. So can you catch? <laughs> nice job. You should be a football goalkeeper. You really have those reflexes and everything. Okay, so for every contour or cloud on the image, detect the starting pixel. This should be easy. Random pixel. Okay? And repeat until the return to the starting pixel should start with the initial and finish with the, with the last one. And if the current position is the white pixel, move one pixel to the left. If the current position is the black pixel, move one pixel to the right. And I have one nice ladybug example for little kids, for example. Now let's try to follow this algorithm. So firstly, we found the first pixel. And now should we move to the right or to the left? What do you think? 50-50, guys, come on. Are you with me? You need candies? Okay. So, to the left, of course. And now, 
we need to move to the right again, since we, we have this white pixel. So uh, this uh, violet is the object that we are actually well, finding the, the contours and the borders, and the, the white part is the sky. So let's say, let's put it like this. So again, to the right, we detected the border. Okay, we need to, mo to move to the left, again to the left, etc. And after you are done with all the combinations, you get a final, final result, and this means the borders are detected. In the, on this image, we have the red borders, white clouds, and light blue sky. Okay, this is the first step. So, but every few seconds, the situation changes. But after I got the first result, I was so excited. It was in the middle of the, of the night, and I wanted to send an email to my mentor, to, to show him that it works. Yeah, finally I got something, okay? So, <laughs> I just turned up the camera and you see, it's almost midnight, but I was too excited. I couldn't wait, I couldn't go, go to sleep to, to, to send the, the, the first result. So, this is how it works, how it worked in the first version. Okay, I had some images of, of the clouds and Obviously, yeah, it, it was in the middle of the night. I couldn't test this uh, outside, so I have this, let's say, proof of concept that it works. Okay, if you change something, if you move the clouds, okay, my, my application actually finds the borders. It's not perfect, it's just a proof of concept, guys. Be patient, okay. So that's why, this, this is me, obviously, but 2013, <laughs> okay. And I didn't get a, a, a response to, to my email from my mentor for weeks. I thought, oh my God, I did something completely wrong. What did I do? Okay, let's, I decided, okay, let's try to, to improve the whole proof of concept a little bit. And I noticed afterwards that during the summer, universities don't work at all. So my mentor didn't check in the email. So it was not the bad solution. It was the nature of, of professor, professor life, I would say. Okay, so. And this is my computer back then, and this is the whole application. So, what environment is this? Eclipse. Eclipse. 2013, guys. IntelliJ wasn't so popular. So, who said Eclipse? Candice for you. Okay. <laughs> Candice for you. Can you catch? Oh, yes. So, but I took the image every 12 seconds from the video that I recorded. And you get something like this. They are not balls, they are not fixed things on the sky, they are constantly changing its, their, their shape and of course their position. Is there a way how to actually predict how fast are they moving to a certain direction? What would you do to measure that? It's very, very complex, of course. And they are merging together, especially those two here. They're constantly merging together, and you cannot know, is this only one or several uh, clouds together merged? Okay, so I decided, well, I cannot like track their borders. I need to do something else. So I tried the following. Let's calculate the center point of the clouds, like a center point that is actually calculated uh, based on the borders, etc. Also math. So, Centroid makes the, the whole situation a little bit easier. So, if I, can, if, if I measure the movement and the, the direction of the centroid, I can tell how much time does one cloud need to move for, I don't know, one or two pixels to the right, to the left, etc. So, I needed to detect the centroids of the clouds. This one is pretty strange because it counted the whole cloud, and this is the center, but this was the situation of the sky, so I couldn't do anything. And I ignored those little things here because they are totally irrelevant. If this cloud covers the sky, nothing happens. It, it will disappear because the, of the heat, etc. Okay, so centroids are the next phase. After that, I try to calculate the movement, the, the position change of the centroid. After that, of course, I, I calculated all the movements and you see a chaos that, that lives on the sky with the clouds. So each 
cloud is moving into a separate direction, almost each, let's say. And these were the results. I was shocked, what, what can I do with it? Especially if two clouds are actually separating, uh, the, the whole thing related with uh, centroids behaves very, very strange because in that case, if you split one, one sorry, one um, cloud to two clouds, a centroid movement is much more significant than this one showed on the image. So the previous, the previous position is this one, the next one is this. So I can also say, okay, if this situation stays, I can calculate how much time the cloud needs to leave the image or to cover the sun, etc. So this was the premise to, for my research to, to see the results, how accurate are my, prediction, uh, my predictions are at the end. So I also, of course, programmed this, let's say, prediction of the, of the uh, well, behavior and of the direction in which the cloud is heading. So I got this. And I also said, okay, let's try to like, use some more precise mathematical shapes like rectangle or ellipse to see, or oval to see actually do we need to actually use the right, the, the, the shape of the, of the cloud or can we approximate their shape? And to be honest, uh, oval shape is producing very, very nice results. So that's why the, the clouds are not so significant. They are all, they can be all uh, like approximately um, substituted with oval, so it, it works. So I, uh, simulated that the position of the sun is here. Let's say how my predictions actually work. Okay, and this is one of the snapshots that I used. The next step is, yeah, let's try to detect the nearest cloud and of course, let's see, um, well, if the sun is only partly covered with uh, with a cloud, this means you are still getting the sunlight. If the sign is completely covered with, with the cloud, you are not getting the sunlight. So that's why it's that's why it's something related to well the the intensity of covering the sun. So we are trying to predict also uh, the the level of of coverage of the of the sun and to to try to predict how much sunlight is going to be emitted anyway. Okay, so this is the real situation in the sky, and you see that after I added the real sun to the sky, you have these lines coming out of the sun. This is also something very, I would say, very, uh, very common, especially if you have a camera that doesn't filter out those things. So we need to use the erosion to actually remove those lines that are coming from the sun. And if I like optimize my uh, algorithm just to focus on the sun, the erosion level is pretty, pretty big. So I remove all the clouds away and just detect the sun. So it's not a circle, believe it or not. It's an, still an oval. Everything is related to an oval on, on our sky, really funny. Okay, so this is, I would say, very nice situation. The, uh, the, the sun is not covered with clouds. Okay, what about this situation? What is the level of the sun, of the cloud coverage? What do you think? Can you calculate this? You need to measure like a zillion of times uh, such a situation to, to get something like this. So, so you can say, okay, let's compare the areas that the erosion algorithm produces so I can just take the produced uh, surface, white surface, and compare it to the initial surface so I can, so I can tell, okay, this, this means the sun is partly covered with, with clouds. Okay, and this is my, what's my big passion is the AI, how to use the AI in any of the situation that you can, you can use. It's hard to use the AI in the business application, to be honest. Uh, you can have those predicting models, predictive analytics, etc. But I use the, I trained the neural network to help me with this, uh, with this part here, with setting the thresholds for hue, saturation, and value things. So it's very annoying uh, constantly to change those levels because the situation in the sky constantly changes. You cannot, you cannot leave it uh, uh, with, with initial values because it doesn't work. So that's why 
I got like several hundreds of images. I trained my neural network to get something that works automatically. I just leave it there and I return in eight hours. It still works because I trained the model and it should work. So I had a deep neural network. I used the uh, Java library for that. Everything is based on Java, including Swing, including this chart. Are you familiar with J free charts library? No? But still, it's free, J free charts, believe it or not. And it generates the histogram very easily, like maybe 25 lines of code, that's it. Okay, so this is my console. I'm just, it's a, in the, I'm in the debugging mode. This is just a console and I'm just trying to predict what is uh, what, the length or duration of the, of the shadow and uh, how much every of the clouds on the sky covers the sun. So this is my, let's say, demo. I'm analyzing every 12 seconds. I'm analyzing the, the image. So debugging, debugging. In 100 seconds, the sun will be covered by 25%, etc. So I'm just recalculating every 12 seconds this. And if I do something wrong with it, if I make a mistake with this, I get this. This is something that is too bad, but because of the wrong thresholds. And the AI comes into the game and it fixes the situation very easily. So we'll see that everything gets back to the initial state and it works. So this is AI. So I'm not doing anything. The AI gets all the parameters from the image and it says, okay, this is wrong, I need to set it back to the proper state, so let's say. And this was the work of the AI. Okay. And of course, if I predict the duration, the, the level of uh, coverage, etc., it's very easy to predict the other ticks also. I'm still not done with my PhD. I cannot reveal all the secrets. That's why this is already published on MIPRO conference. Am I not wrong? On 2014. It's still there in 2018. But still, when I'm done, I'll show you the, the rest of the, of the project. Okay, so to summarize everything, uh, uh, well, everything was based on taking the image every 12 seconds because you don't have enough time to take every image. So 24 image per second is 25 images per second is too, too big amount of images or data. So I decided, okay, since the situation in the sky doesn't change so drastically in 12 seconds, it's just enough for me, okay? So OpenCV or Java CV library does a good job. So if you are a skilled Java developer, you can do miracles. Just imagination is the only limitation in this case, really, okay? Or if you buy a wrong book, you can also lose a lot of time. But still, it's a lesson learned. I just said, okay, maybe I should write a book for that. <laughs> maybe I should start something, uh, wrapping out my experience and to help the others. A DDL file is needed to run it on Windows, believe it or not. So it's a special, well, I would say module <laughs> that needs to be there. Uh, I didn't try it on Linux, to be honest, but it should work better than <laughs> on Windows. And instead of simulating the future cloud movement, I said, okay, I have too many clouds, but I have only one sun. Okay, let's try to move the sun in the opposite way instead of moving all the clouds in the right way, so I'll get the best results. And it worked, and it worked. Okay, so using Java combination with other components like libraries for image processing, etc., you can even optimize the electrical system based on solar panels. So this is the conclusion. If you have any questions, yes. Okay, so maybe I misunderstood by looking at those black and white images, but your sun, visible or not, was kind of binary. Mm -hmm. While the yeah, sun can partly, shine more or less. Partly covered is not really binary. It should be fuzzy logic, to be honest, but still, okay? So, uh, since there can be multiple layers of cloud because it's 3D, not 2D, right. so more or less sun can go through the clouds and the sun can exactly. be lower in the sky, higher in the sky. So the number of looks is different. 
And doesn't that actually affect how much electricity or uh, energy is actually emitted to your solar panels? So your solar panels are on the ground, and your camera is near to the solar panels. So the perspective is exactly the same. So cannot, the, you, you need to know, are the current clouds going to cover the sun or not? So are they two, three, four, five layers? It doesn't matter at the end of the day. If the sun, uh, if the um, yeah sun come, cannot uh, cannot uh, uh, come through the clouds, you'll get zero. Uh, okay, but isn't the energy uh, uh, proportional to the obviously the uh, the amount of sunlight actually going through? It's not it's not just binary going. You have or two not components going. like direct sunlight and indirect sunlight. So indirect okay. is reflected from the objects around the solar panel. So, but the most of the sunlight comes from the direct sunlight. So we had those expensive things measuring the, the, the direct sunlight uh, sunlight on the on the roof of this uh, fair building C. They had like 14, 15. Uh, uh, floors, so the the sensors are really precise. So I I track the uh, the sunlight for I think two weeks or something, and I saw when the cloud is covering the sun, you won't get anything from it. Mm. Or I also added a little a little part of the uh, and improved my algorithm. I'm using the average red, green, and blue components of the cloud. So I, I can predict if the cloud can be like broke through by, silent, uh, by the sunlight or not. So, but this is the part in which I didn't still publish this scientific part. So I'm, I need to be, well, very silent about it because uh, I need to publish it. So when I get my PhD, uh, I, I will talk about it. But still, you are right. Some clouds cannot be like, uh, uh, break, broke through by the silence, and some can, but those things uh, depend on the structure of the of the cloud. RGB, maybe average, uh, average values or of RGB components of the image of the cloud. Okay, thank you. I hope I answered that. Yes. Kulkushio. Uh, very Last impressive. Question. Very impressive work, Alex. Uh, <laughs> just one question: Have you considered uh, tracking the light uh, luminosity to? calculate if the sun is visible or not? And uh, what were the challenges? What would be the challenges with it, uh, especially considering uh, recent availability of Arduino devices that have these, those sensors? Thank you. Yeah, I think Arduino is not the option. Why? Because the equipment to measure this, the direct sunlight, it's, is very, very expensive. Like, fair spend 50,000 euros on it. So that's why it's, uh, it's a unique opportunity for me to use this equipment. So uh, the, uh, the, the equipment looks like a camera. You're just tracking direct sunlight and this reflected sunlight. So um, I also take this data, a bunch of data, and I try to combine this data with my output, so if I see the correlation, I can also expand this AI influence to the whole system to make it more automatic, so to say. So it's, uh, it, everything is related. So you just need to find your relation, and of course, if you find something new, you can get a PhD degree, that's it. So this is my goal, <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so that's much, That's all guys. for the question. Can I have a round of applause for Alexander?